Today we're going to be talking about the X Plus Toho Maniacs Godzilla Tower from Godzilla vs. Gigan. Right out of his bland shipping container, Godzilla Tower will be standing at just about 7 inches tall. I will not be factoring in Balloon Coon over here just because I bent it into place and I don't feel like bending it out of place. It's got a nice little curve to it and I don't gotta worry about no kinks. That's what she said! <laughs> also, here's the shipping box. Just has his name on it over here. That's about it. No picture, no nothing. And now let's take a look at Godzilla Tower's beautiful Toho Maniacs tag. We will, of course, get a picture of Godzilla Tower over here with the 70th anniversary icon, the Godzilla icon, Godzilla 2024, Godzilla Tower, and some other stuff, and Godzilla vs. Gigan with a whole bunch of other stuff. And on the opposite side, we will get all of this telling us stuff about figure i guess and since this figure was technically an exclusive to rick shonen i believe and i don't think it's as officially available anymore and the secondhand market is as you'd expect jesus lord in heaven gotta give this guy the double sleeving method yeah, I know the tag was technically already covered in plastic, but that doesn't mean nothing. Here at Shinrob Jira, you rap before you tap, and if you're already wrapped, you rap again. Just like that. Oh, very nice and schwank. <laughs> and now that we've handled the tag, I need to tack on a history portion for this video because I am that much of a fan of Godzilla Tower. Yes, I'm serious. Godzilla Tower comes to us from the 1972 flick Godzilla vs. Gigan. In the film universe, the tower was constructed by the unspace hunter Nebula aliens for their fictitious World Children's Land. And it was all part of their devious little plot for perfect peace. And if you out here believe in the words of giant alien cockroach people, and their idea of perfect peace. No. In the real world, though, Godzilla Tower was made by the modeling artist and sculptor Nobuyuki Yasumaru. Nobuyuki Yasumaru also served as the chief modeler over at Toho between 1971 and 1991. Dude had one hell of a run. And what makes that run even better is that the man would go on to design Megalogoji for Godzilla vs. Megalon. And as pointed out here in this My Kaiju article, Megalogoji and Godzilla Tower do bear a bit of a resemblance to one another, so I'm glad my guy got his Godzilla design. Shout out to my kaiju, I gotta start using this website a lot more. Anyway, as far as merchandising goes, unfortunately Godzilla Tower doesn't have much. Yeah, I know it's a stationary thing, but I want more. Marmot, of course, would give us, I believe, our first Godzilla Tower figure, as well as three color variants to follow. Or at least at the same time, who knows? Hey, yo, Marmot, bring that mold back, I kinda want it. In recent years, though, Monogram actually did Godzilla Tower keychains, once for one of their wave releases and another for the box set that's being shown right here. I don't think there's any major differences between the two, but that's cool. The only other thing we've gotten of Godzilla Tower was from Cast. And if you know anything about Cast, uh, you know you're gonna see pictures of them on Twitter and then likely never find them online. And if you do, it's gonna be expensive. So here he is. My absolute number one wish-listed monster or iteration of Godzilla ever. Oh, fuck me sideways, look at that, oh Jesus. Yeah, I'm not happy there's a paint spooch over there, but I do have to give this mistake credit. It at least followed the designs of the rails and stairs and banisters and everything. <laughs> Anyway, the level of detailing going on on this little release is simply magnificent. I mean, just look at this. We've got Godzilla Tower, we've got the front door, the gate, the little side magoo going on over there. And then the further you look up, just the detailing of everything going on here is simply just X plus worthy and right there. David Lynchian in cinema even. And this stair elevator magoo going on over here is going to look great no matter the side you look at it from. Hell, even all the way up top over here. Even the portion that's going up into Godzilla's scrotal area. Just lovely. And look at the nice little trimmings we've got going on here. X plus, I love ya. Dog, there's even stairs. This figure has it all, except for articulation. articulation. From the tail, we can see beautiful skin detailing. We can see the dorsal fins, which is only going to have two rows and they're only going to look like cardboard cookie cutouts of Godzilla's dorsal fins because that's the whole aesthetic of this guy. Simplified, gorgeous, very easy on the eyes. Godzilla kind of looks like he's made out of uh, 
vampire materials. <laughs> and that is absolutely in no way a bad thing. I mean, again, this thing was just a stationary tower. It was really only meant to be the centerpiece of World Children's Land, and, you know, the kitty see Godzilla, they want to go in, so there you go. It did its purpose. Uh, it accomplished its purpose. It fulfilled its purpose. There we go. Would you believe I was at one point in time an English major? Mm -hmm. In an alternate timeline, I'm an English teacher. Imagine the printed in ink cinema that would have come from a student of mine. Dear Lord. Oops in my mouth. <laughs> Pretty sure this was meant to be smooth, but again, I just wanted to take another look at the back. Just, oh man, I love this thing. I really do. And now we can take a look at Godzilla's little mug over here. And honestly, it is quite adorable. It really fits this toy aesthetic that World's Children Land had going on for it. The big blue bubblegum pupils that make this Godzilla look like he could be one of those uh, ice pop things that you get from the, uh, the ice cream man. <laughs> Godzilla Tower ice cream bars? Let's do it. The teeth are unaged and angular. His brow is nice and strong still. I don't know. It's probably because I'm a super fan of this thing. I have massive nostalgia for it, but just the look and feel of Godzilla Tower. It just feels so beautifully nailed here. The only way it could have looked even better is if it was just like covered in dirt near uh, the foot area. It'd make him look a little dusty. And AOX Plus, if you want to toss that variant out, by all means, I'll gladly spend another $50 before shipping on this thing. And yes, this lovely little guy was $50 before shipping. Makes this all the more painful to look at. It's goofy. It's toyetic. It's something that's meant to attract children to an amusement park. And I feel it was beautifully done both in the movie and here by X+. The only other thing that there really is to talk about is Balloon Coon over here, which will be sporting a bendy wire for its string. And other than that, this thing up top here is just bland and white and without any sense of individuality. Which, depending on who you ask, is how many people view me. <laughs> I can joke about it. All there's left to cover is just the bottom side of this release, and here it is. Trademark and Toho Company Limited, Plex made in China, X plus 52213. I mean, I guess we could talk about how there's even going to be detailing on the underside of Godzilla's hands over here. The details for the fingers are actually quite nice. Simple and unexpected, rather well done, and very much praiseable. Bless your hearts and souls there, X plus, and thank you, Toho, for even allowing this to be made. You're fulfilling a childhood fantasy of mine. I'm going to award this thing two solid stars for paint and detail, and a sub rating of a solid star for including Balloon Coon with a bendy wire. So if you wanted to get weird with it, you absolutely can. I, for one, am going to keep it exactly how it is shown here because that childhood dream fulfilled and I want it to remain in great condition. The X Plus Toho Maniacs line seems to be making figures that are a little akin to the limited movie monster series Godzilla Store exclusives. It's not going to be majorly mass produced, it's going to have a limited run, once they're gone, they're gone, and with that prospect put into play, X Plus I want a two scale corn on the cob wrapped in tinfoil so I can hold people up at cob point. Just like my lord and savior. Blessed art thou for we in an unbuttered cob world without it. Seriously, Bandai Premium does it all the time with uh, Kamen Rider and Ultraman and everything, so why not a corn on the cob? I'd buy the crap out of it. Might even buy two. But anyway, size comparisons. Trendmasters 4-inch Gigan figures. An assortment of little Gigans. Movie Monster Series Standard Gigan and Retro Color Gigan. Memorial Box Gigan and Bandai America Gigan. Movie Monster Series Godzilla 1968 and Movie Monster EX Series Godzilla 1998, Godzilla vs. Gigan on DVD and Blu-ray, Godzilla vs. Gigan on VHS, and the only other Toho Maniacs figure I own, Matango or the giant laughing gaffing fun guy from Matango. The year has only just started. January is already on its way out and I already have one of my favorite figures of the year. Yes, it's mostly driven by my nostalgic urge from childhood to have this as a figure, but it's also just because it's very well made. Yeah, I got that little paint spooch right there, but that's not disturbing the idea. The presence of the fact but I own this. This exists. Been a crazy week this week so far, and next week's looking to be even crazier with some of the stuff I've got coming in. Strawberry Hedora, of course. The Bandai Limited Movie Monster Series Theater Exclusive Translucent Blue. Godzilla Minus One Godzilla. Possibly a Valentine's Day special to bring back the Lady Dumitresque review vibes. Anyway, Patreon, social media. Thanks so much for watching. See you all next time. Peace. <laughs>